WinBet is live in Tennessee and bringing you the action of real money sports betting right in the palm of your hand. Now you can get in on the action with all of your favorite teams across NBA, NFL, NHL, MLB, MLS, and more. Don't forget to take advantage of the generous promos, great odds, and unique parlays available in Tennessee on the WinBet app. Head to the App Store to download the WinBet app and sign up today. First-time bettors will receive a risk-free sports bet of up to $500. Terms and conditions apply for all promotion. Get the details at winbet.com. W-Y-N-N-B-E-T dot com. Must be 21 or older and present in Tennessee. Gambling problem? Call the Tennessee Red Line. 1-800-889-9789. Need some barbecue nachos? Brisket? Ribs? Maybe a cheese and sausage plate? The Rendezvous is now open for curbside and carryout. They also deliver through a few of the popular delivery apps. While not much changes in that alley basement, you will see a few small differences and additions. They are open from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. And for the first time ever, they have dessert, key lime pie tarts, chocolate chest pie tarts, and so much more. Spend some time downtown and visit our friends at The Rendezvous, a family-owned restaurant in downtown Memphis Alley since 1948. Toyota's national sales event is on with great deals on the best-selling car, Toyota Camry, and the stylishly affordable Corolla. Now through September 7th, get $1,000 customer cash on any new 21 Corolla, Corolla Hybrid, or Corolla Hatchback, or get an exciting new 21 Camry. Now with 2.49 APR financing plus 750 TFS finance cash with approved credit through TFS. Excludes Camry TRD. For complete details, go to buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. If you've been told that you snore loudly, making choking noises, or gasp for air while sleeping, if so, you may have obstructive sleep apnea. One in four adults in the United States has obstructive sleep apnea. If left untreated, it can cause morning headaches, daytime sleepiness, high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, or diabetes. Call Mid-South Pulmonary and Sleep Specialist PC, the official pulmonary and sleep practice of the Memphis Grizzlies, at 901-276-6507. I was like the no. MVP of summer league. No, you won. Second year. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I think Nate Robinson won all those. Listen, Didn't you yo, win like seven MVPs in a row? 2005. Right. This dude said he was summer league MVP. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> Tony, they didn't even have an MVP in 2005. <laughs> I, that's what I'm trying to tell you. So you were there. <laughs> <laughs> so you were your, your self-made MVP. The Chris Vernon Show, live weekdays at noon on GrindCityMedia.com or wherever you get your podcast. Welcome to Rise and Grind with Jessica and Megan, live on GrindCityMedia.com. Now, here's your hosts, Jessica Benson and Megan Triplett. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Welcome into Rise and Grind. Megan Triplett, Jessica Benson here with you. And CJ Hurt is out today, but we are joined by our lovely friend, John Roser, who is in the booth. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, so much enthusiasm. Yes. You, you got an energy me. drink? Of course. Of course you do. Of course I do. What a stupid question. Yeah. I just just hope my heart doesn't explode while I'm doing one of these shows. Oh, oh gosh. One, don't man. say that. <laughs> I just freaked her out the rest of the like, show. Please. Please do not say that at all. We have got a jam-packed show excitement. for you today. Hopefully, Roser makes it through because Pete Pranica will join us in <laughs> studio in just a little bit. And we're also going to have a... We got to catch up with uh, Santi Aldama yesterday before the summer league game and get to know got to know him a little bit better and it was it was it's an interesting interview. I I really really enjoy talking to him. Yeah, I want to talk to him more. Mm-hmm. It's I mean obviously like we're stuck just talking to him on a Zoom call and it's him getting prepared for a game that night. But such an interesting journey he had mm-hmm. from growing up in Spain, kind of some of his role models along the way. His dad was a basketball player as well, and then like to think about how quickly he's had to move from being in Spain to getting drafted to getting in Las Vegas. He had joined the team in Salt Lake City for the first little round of Summer League, too. So he needs a nap. He Mm -hmm. hasn't been to Memphis yet. 
which is crazy. Don't give everything away. I'm in not, the interview. I'm not, I'm not. It was a teaser. I'm like, you want, you, she's telling everything. It was out. a teaser. You gotta wait. I That's coming up so in, in, in a few minutes. We did talk to him before last night's summer league game. He did not play in, in last night's summer league game, Great. but the Grizzlies wrapped it all up. They won. <laughs> was, did you stay up to watch the whole entire game? Um, uh, I have a confession. Uh, no, I've actually got very distracted, and we received some IKEA furniture that mm-hmm. we had ordered like a month ago that we forgot about and it came yesterday and once you start putting together ikea furniture it's like one of those things you can't just leave and by we putting together ikea furniture i mean chris putting together the ikea furniture and me just like sitting there Mm -hmm. for emotional support so we got really caught up in that and then i looked at the clock and i was like oh the grizzlies have been playing summer league but i turned on they were up by like 20 and then obviously saw the you know not a, not a ton of guys played who we'll yeah. probably see in Memphis Grizzlies uniforms this season, but it was cool to see them wrap it up with a win. Yeah, there, there are some bright spots. It was like at one point they had like a 26-point lead, and then you Love allowed to see it. the Clippers, which it's kind of been like the storyline of the Grizzlies. It's like that third quarter where we allowed teams to kind of like sneak back up on in there, and then you thought, could the Clippers cut this into single digits? Like, no, 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 no. These guys have – been able to put a great game together great game plan together like let's 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 leave it all out there on the court and get a victory and they were able to 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 get it done it got a little close there towards the end but um Shaq Buchanan had it had had an amazing game he had this little dunk that you know that made us all kind of like sit up a little bit because it was it was one of those games where you're just like okay you know um, I don't know some of these guys, but, you know, Sam Merrill did play. Easy Ponds played, too. There, there were some moments where you're like, okay. And then Jack Buchanan had, had an amazing spot when he had a dunk. And, you know, Jaw was there. You had that Murray State love, and he, and he enjoyed it, too. But it was good to see this team kind of put together what they did put together and get a victory out, out of it. Rosa, how excited are you to see Eve Ponds in South Haven this year? Oh, very excited also. Uh, I mean, Dean L., was the star. I mean, Dinell is the absolute star. Had Jow off his feet, out of his seat, on his feet. Five assists in those seven minutes. And just, I mean, that's Summer League Jokic. The Summer League Jokic stuff last night. I mean, I, 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 like, I mean, we always talked about how Wayne Selden was like Summer League Michael Jordan. He's just bigger and stronger than everybody a couple years ago. I mean, I think I think uh, Darnell Coward is clearly summer league Jokic. <laughs> After I just love how the sun is shining on you in this very moment of and you saying that. It looks like there's like a halo over you, and it's like listen to what Rosa mm-hmm. is saying. Did you see his super? It said presence is a present. Yeah. So like very ethereal, <laughs> yes. John Rosa. Presence this is morning. a present. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. Also, wait, on Ro- well, it's not CJ's corner. It's Rosa's room today. Oh. Taking people in Memphis to traffic school today. Oh goodness, that's coming up yeah. at what time? It's, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. It's not. I'm not gonna like yell at people, but I just have to. What know, time can can, can, can our audience and our listeners be expecting this so that, that they know when your road lessons will come? I don't. We're gonna. So we're just teasing a bunch of stuff, are we? Right. We're just teasing yeah, a bunch of stuff. That's, that's what we're this just show teasing. is. We're basically te- just biding our time to get. <laughs> to I, you know what? Stuff. People may actually want to do this. I'll teach Memphis drivers how to drive. There's your tease. <laughs> That's that feels tease. like an impossible task. It does. Well, I will do the impossible. And if the you want to hear about rough. the time Mark Gasol cursed out Santi Aldama, listen to that interview coming up. Oh, oh so okay. now we're just making things yeah, up. Yeah, we're just making things up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just making things up. Like, but it's a good oh. tease. Like, who knows that story? Because I don't recall it getting yeah, that story weird. from Santi. Yeah. That, I don't either. I must have blacked out. Like, I have no recollection. But, Roser, thanks for, thanks for keeping us on tap. Like, Absolutely. Uh, what, what would we do without you teasing the best part of the interview? <laughs> it was great. But, no, it was good to see the Grizzlies wrap up Summer League. I don't know. It, it's fun to watch Summer League and, and for all the teams and for all of the young guys out there. What do you really learn from Summer League? You learn that they at least exist and can play basketball and can start mm-hmm. to adjust to that NBA pace of things. But, like, the real stuff kicks off in yeah. a month or so. Yeah, I think, like, we've – it's been great to see some of these guys because we know with, with Summer League, a lot a lot of the storyline is always centered around – guys trying to vie for a roster spot, whether that be on the team that they're playing for or whether that be for another team. And that gets them more playing time. And just like Santi Aldama, which we'll talk about with him in the the interview coming up, it was a chance to see some of the first-round rookies, second-round rookies, and sophomores that didn't get a chance to play in Summer League last year due to the, the pandemic to get them back out there and get acclimated and to see Desmond Bangs, you know, Xavier Tillman to kind of get extra minutes to get some more playing time to be those kind of leaders on the court that they didn't necessarily get get a chance to do when they played for the Grizzlies. And a lot of these guys, which is like the biggest storyline is 
A lot of these guys had several starts last year. A lot of these guys had played several minutes, and they're playing in summer league just to give them some, get their legs going a little bit more and to kind of like experiment. And I do think the Grizzlies, we got a chance to experiment and see some things. And I know the biggest things have has been the trades and the moves and the, the shakes. But then you're thinking about, well, no matter where we go from starters to the bench players, I feel good about kind of what the summer league team was able to do in Utah and in Vegas to, yes, we wanted to see them, you know, get to the championship and be the summer league championships champions again. Didn't get a chance to see that, but they were able to kind of fix the issues that we did see from game one to game two to game four to game five. And it was like a nice, um, adjustment coming out of the Olympics to have summer league to focus on and give us something to watch and like stay attached to sports. No offense to all the, the big baseball fans out there, but as everyone's well aware here on rise and grind, that's not really our jam through most mm-hmm. of the summer. So it was nice to just like have that background noise of, Oh, a summer league game is on. I know we do have the teams competing for a summer league championship, so it's not over yet. But mm-hmm. if you're the Grizzlies, like you got to see Zaire Williams, you got to see Santi Aldama, you got to see Desmond Baines, Xavier Tillman, John Conchar, Killian and Tilly all show that they've made improvements in their game too. So like what more could you want other than, a summer league yeah. championship. I will that say, I think, the King, I think this is the year for the, the Sacramento Kings. Oh, oh this is the year for we're for, deciding when it comes to summer league. I think I'm going to give it to, to, to Sacramento. Um, we talked about it last week, and I've gotten a chance to watch a little bit more uh, from them in summer league. That is just a, it's crazy to think the Kings have become this fun team to watch, and you know the Grizzlies are equally just as much fun. But the, the whole entire bench, the roster, they are they're playing hard. They, they, they are here not playing games, and a lot of them are here to, to improve their game, but it does feel as if they're playing for something a little bit more. I do like the Davion Mitchell mm-hmm. being really into Summer League. Like, you need those they're guys who come defense. in and are like, exactly. really no, no. want to play. Yeah, how who wants defense talk about, Summer League? But how many times are we going to talk about Sacramento being like t- towards last in the league in defense, and you see the Kings being like the Summer League? I know, I know it's Summer League, but the Summer League team playing tremendous defense, getting some stops. When the Grizzlies played them their defense was on point and you got to see that and then and then you saw how they played um was it the uh was it the dallas mavericks the other day when they, when they played them i was like okay this is this is gonna be the team this so is, you're this taking the kings and i in think the finals. Gonna, yeah because the Grizzlies aren't in it the kings are the underdogs i think i, I thought boston the kings are gonna um, be the summer league four champions. and a half point favorites like, if you're into I, betting on that kind of thing. i like the celtics you know and I thought one of the this is what you brought up, Megan. I thought mm-hmm. I think this is one of the big storylines of the summer league that has been good for a lot of teams is the second year guys and how a lot of them have looked. I mean, they haven't looked, you know, pretty good. Okay, good. Like they've looked awesome. Play like, whether it's De- Desmond Bain, Xavier Tillman, Peyton Pritchard with the Celtics, mm-hmm. Aaron Neesmith, who had a kind of up and down rookie year with with Boston. He's been awesome. Tyrese Maxey with the, the Sixers goes out in his first game. Um, and puts 19 points up in the first half. Uh, Obi Toppin, Emmanuel Quickly, like they've all looked great in summer league. And so I think, you know, maybe this draft will end up being, a, I don't think there's the star power there, but I think a lot of these guys are going to end up being really good role players. And then, you know, a lot of the rookies have been, I guess Cam Thomas has been the one where it's, he's been the one where people have said, great, Brooklyn needs more offense, just what they need. Uh, but he's been the one where it's like, okay, why does this guy drop? Why did this guy drop so much in the draft, much like last year when the regular season started and they saw how games played out? It was like, wait, why did Desmond Bain drop so much in this draft? Mm -hmm. It appears Cam Thomas may be that guy this year. Mm -hmm. Well, we will see who wins all the Summer League marbles here down the stretch. But we're going to take a quick break. We have a special interview. Santi Aldama will join the show when we come back. And still ahead, Pete Branica, who was in Las Vegas calling Summer League games, will join us to wrap up and give us his thoughts on Summer League, Grizzlies trades, all that and more still ahead here on Rise and Grind. Have gold? Bring it to King. Grab everything you'll never wear again. King will buy all your gold jewelry or trade it for new jewelry and get 20% more. Have gemstones or diamonds you don't want to sell, sentimental items passed down to you. King can use your gems or diamonds and create a new work of art designed with your own taste and style. Trade in your gold, let King design something that's all yours or sell us your gold. There's no better time than now during gold buying and custom design days at King Furs and Fine Jewelry in Laurelwood where custom design is our specialty. Represent Every Day, presented by Delta Dental of Tennessee, is an incentive-based program focused on keeping youth 
K through sixth grade engaged in school in order to combat truancy. In partnership with Shelby County Schools and with the help of Delta Dental of Tennessee, the Grizzlies are focused on reducing chronic absenteeism among the most impacted schools in the Mid-South. Students in the program have the opportunity to win fun and unique prizes by going to school every day and being engaged in the classroom. For more information on the program, visit grizzlies.com slash community slash education today. Need some barbecue nachos, brisket, ribs, maybe a cheese and sausage plate? The Rendezvous is now open for curbside and carryout. They also deliver through a few of the popular delivery apps. While not much changes in that alley basement, you will see a few small differences and additions. They are open from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. And for the first time ever, they have dessert, key lime pie tart, chocolate chest pie tarts, and so much more. Spend some time downtown and visit our friends at The Rendezvous, a family-owned restaurant in downtown Memphis Alley since 1948. Ashley Home Store is proud to call Memphis home. We believe your personal style makes your house into a home. Discover incredible styles, selection, and quality at a price to fit any budget. Ashley Home Store has just the looks and options you need. Explore totally different styles and trends all in one place. Finding the perfect furniture, mattresses, and home decor makes it easy for you to create a home you love to live in. Only at America's number one furniture and mattress store. Ashley Home Store, proud partner of the Memphis Grizzlies. Toyota's national sales event is on with great deals on the number one selling Tacoma and RAV4 and the best in class Highlander. Now through September 7th, you can get 2.49 APR financing on a new 21 Tacoma or get 2.49 financing plus $750 TFS finance cash on a new gas powered RAV4 or aggressively sophisticated Highlander or Highlander hybrid with approved credit through TFS. For complete details, go to buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Welcome back to Rise and Grind. We are joined this morning by a very special guest, one of the newest members of the Memphis Grizzlies, Santi Aldama, joining us from Summer League in Las Vegas. Santi, how's it going? Hey, how you doing? Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We're so excited to get to know you a little bit better. We've gotten to watch you play a couple times now. How's Summer League been for you? It's been a great experience just getting out there with the guys, knowing everybody. You know, for sure, it's, it's been a lot of new stuff thrown at us at once, but you know it's been great just to to get to meet everybody and get used to this new lifestyle. Let's talk. Let's talk about this new lifestyle because I know you said in one of your interviews that it has just been like kind of like a whirlwind, and a lot has happened. What has these last few weeks been like for you personally, just to kind of like taking the whole process in? Well, uh, so I got drafted, uh, and then. I, I waited back home until I was able to fly to the States. So I got to Utah because we were playing the first summer league there, but I wasn't allowed to play uh, because the trade wasn't official. So I was dealing with some jet lag, you know, it was, it was kind of crazy just getting to know everybody, a lot of new names, a lot of new people, like a whole new world. And while I was, you know, <laughs> I was unsettled, and then we flew directly to, to Las Vegas. So, wow. so I haven't even been in Memphis. So it's just been like crazy. But yeah, I'm feeling, you know, more comfortable every day with everything. And, you know, after the summer league, hopefully I can go back to Memphis and settle up a little bit. Wait, how's the jet lag thing? Because yeah. I, I've been trying to, I, I'm, I just got off of, off of a job where I had to switch my, my sleeping schedule. And so um, I haven't been, been successful with it. I cannot imagine what it's been like for you. Have you got, have, are you all the way there yet? Uh, yeah, I mean, pre pretty much. Like, it's still a little bit weird, but yeah, pretty much. So, so I was in Baltimore for the past two years. It was like a five, six hour difference, which wasn't too bad. And, and like always coming from Europe to the States, it's always easier than, than coming from the States to Europe. But being in the West Coast is even, even harder, you know, because it's an eight, nine hour difference. And, you know, you, you really notice that like, like for the first week I, I would wake up like three times every time I went to sleep and probably like end up waking up at 5 a.m. after really trying to sleep. So, so yeah, it, it, it was really weird, but you know, that's something you have to get over with. So, 
So yeah, I'm, I'm good in that. <laughs> big, big on the naps at this point, getting some of those midday sleeps in. Yeah, that, that was definitely a big thing. <laughs> well, like you said, it's been a total whirlwind for you. Take us a little bit back to draft night. You you hadn't attended the 2021 NBA Combine. You hadn't conducted workouts with a lot of NBA teams. So what was the process like for you leading up to draft night and ultimately seeing the Memphis Grizzlies trade up to take you with that 30th pick? Yeah, so, I mean, I was just working out back home, you know, working on my game. Uh, which was good, you know, just to be isolated, just, you know, trying to trying to get better. And, yeah, draft night, I mean, it, it, it was hard, too, because in Spain, it was, I, got, I think I got drafted at, like, almost 5 a.m., so I was almost <laughs> falling asleep. But, yeah, it, it was great just having everybody by my side, my coaches, my, my family, my friends. So it was definitely really exciting. I mean, I'm happy you did not fall asleep and you were awake for that whole entire moment because it was special to see. What have like what has your family said to you? What are the messages coming from Spain from your friends and family since you've left? Yeah, so everybody's really, really excited, really happy for me. Uh, everybody that was there has been see, like has seen me play since I was you know a kid. So they've been by my side for all of my career. So for them it was a very special moment. But for me having them by my side like they have always been was also really special. So, they, you know, they're just keeping in touch with me, just trying to make sure I'm right and, and trying to advise me in any way possible. So what, if anything, did you know about the city of Memphis prior to getting drafted by the Grizzlies? Uh, so uh, I knew uh, a couple of Spanish players played here. So, hmm. you know, the Gasol brothers and Navarro. So, so, yeah, it was definitely exciting, you know, uh, being able to play somewhere where those, those guys have played before. So... So yeah, I, I was really, it was really special. Does it, I'm saying, when you think, when you found out that it's going to be Memphis, did all those thoughts come to your head about you, you, you grew up watching the Gasol brothers. Now you're kind of like joining those footsteps emotionally. Did, did that have like some type of impact over you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's special, you know, to be able to uh, be somewhere where, where, you know, your, your favorite players have, have played that. So <laughs> So, yeah, it, it was a special moment. I definitely thought about that. And, you know, I, I'm really excited to start playing here where they have played. Yeah, you definitely haven't been short of role models within the game. Your dad was an Olympian for Spain in the 1992 Games. I'm curious what it was like for you growing up, the son of a basketball player, following in those footsteps and, and how big your dad has been in this process. Yeah, he, he's been huge. My dad and my uncle, they both played. Uh, my dad being an Olympian, of course, you know, that, that's my goal. So him being able to play, he played against the original Dream Team. And, you know, that, that was very special for me. Uh, he has a picture with Michael Jordan. So uh, just getting to see that every day at home was special. And, you know, it kind of motivated me to, to you know, try to be an Olympian one day. So, so yeah, he, he, he's been huge for me. He's always given me my space. He told me, you have to be you, but always giving me advice. Uh, taking me through the right path and just keeping my head in the right position. You know, what are some of those stories like? Can you, I know you are born four years after that, those 90-92 games, but what has been some of the stories that he shared with you? Anything interesting and good? No, so I was born nine years later than that. Oh, nine years. <laughs> We're old, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit younger than that, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's been great. He, him just telling me stories about... Uh, the Olympic Games telling me it was, you know, an unbelievable experience, something that everybody should experience, but of course only a couple are lucky enough. So, so yeah, just, you know, tell me about uh, the Olympic lifestyle, how, you know, living inside the Olympic place is, is great. So, so yeah, just thinking about that really, really drives me and I really want to live that experience too. And of course, my dad being an Olympian is always uh, an extra motivating factor. Tell us about that summer league lifestyle, because it really is a lifestyle. And I know you've had to adjust just to getting your NBA legs under you, but also the experience of starting to get to meet some of your Memphis teammates, aside from the summer league roster, too. What's it been like being around guys like John Morant, seeing them come out and support this team? Have you had any fun interactions so far? Yeah, I mean, just having them, you know, after every game, come up to us, talk to us, help us. You know, they're guys I, I've been seeing playing for a couple of years now. They're great. So, yeah, just having them by our sides, giving, giving us some insight and, you know, trying to help us. Uh, 
it, it's been great. And yeah, like you said, summer league is a whole different lifestyle, different than anything. So, you know, a lot of people here, uh, crowded places and, you know, just really trying to keep, stay safe and, and stay, you know, stay the course and, and learn from this, this experience. And speaking of learning, when you think about these last couple of games that you've gotten to play in Vegas for Summer League, for, for your game overall, when you look at this time, what, how has this impacted your playing, playing time and how important is Summer League, especially when it comes to just being a chance to get back out there on the court and playing NBA-style basketball? Yeah, I mean, it's been very important, of course. Uh, just, I would say the biggest thing is just getting used to the pace of the game and the game in general. It's, it's really different than what I'm used to. And also, I, since, since draft night, I haven't like, had the chance to do, play much basketball. Of course, work out a little bit, but not with many people, just because, like I said, I needed to wait for the trade to be official and everything. So Zaire and I, we both had like a couple of practices and and we've played four games. So, so yeah, for sure it's been weird. It's been a great experience. And just, I think for both of us, just every game we've been getting better. So, so yeah, really excited to, to have a chance now to keep working and looking forward for the rest of the season. Santa, you can't turn on a Grizzly Summer League game without hearing someone talk about Zaire's 5,000 calorie a day diet. I'm curious, are you capable of consuming 5,000 calories a day? Yeah, I'm definitely capable, but the thing is consuming uh, healthy, healthy calories. And, you know, that that's the biggest thing. So, I mean, that's my goal, too. I need to consume a lot of calories, but healthy ones. So, yeah, I, I'm definitely going to be, be trying and maybe competing with him to see who can who can get more. <laughs> All right. So if you could pick a cheat meal for yourself where it's like you can do 5,000 calories a day, it can be unhealthy. What is your dream meal that you can have? I mean, unhealthy, probably pizza. Mm. We got yeah, some good that, pizza that places. Be... Yeah. Is it what? We have some good pizza places in Memphis for you. Oh, the, the, then you have to show me. But <laughs> I think, I guess, right now I'm saying pizza, but it really depends on, on the day and, and the week. So so right now I give you pizza, but you, you have to show me all my cheap places. <laughs> well, come to Memphis, you'll find a way to put on some pounds. <laughs> it's a good food city. And once you get here, it'll be fun to have you have the opportunity to get to know a little bit more about Memphis. I know Grizzlies fans are just so excited to get to know more about you and the new members of this team. Is there something you can share that, that might surprise people about you? Oh, wow. I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know what, what I could say. I mean, just, I mean... This, this is going to be my third year in the U.S. I, I think most people know that. So I've been living in Baltimore for the first uh, two years, which is the East Coast. So I guess Memphis is a bit different. So I don't know if, if that's fun enough, but, you know, <laughs> it, it's definitely, for me, it's an experience because, like, Baltimore is completely different than Spain and Memphis is going to be too. So, so yeah, it's just going to be, wow, it's going to be different. What was the hardest thing for you about moving to the States? Uh, I would say time difference with my family, just because like talking to them, it's, it's weird. I mean, East Coast and Memphis time is not that hard. In Vegas, it's even tougher because it's different. Like you're living completely different lifestyles. But yeah, I would say that's the biggest thing. You know, I, my, when I adapted to the U.S., it was really smooth, really easy. I felt like at home, uh, since the first day, but yeah, the, the time zones are, are weird. Yeah, well, central time zone, we'll make sure that you are all set. And we hope to have, I know, this, I know this, this year has been really crazy for everybody, but we hope that your family gets to come visit you in Memphis and feeling like home, Memphis is gonna, definitely going to feel like home. And so when we get the opportunity, I know Memphis fans cannot wait to see you around the city. We'll make sure you have um, some food options, some pizza. Anything else we need to add to the list so we can start gathering the information now? You need pizza options and what else? I need a, a good steak place. That, that, that's the biggest. That's the biggest. Okay. Got it. I got you on that one. I got you on some good steak places. Don't you worry. Right. I'm not going to shout anybody so. out yet because I don't know what is a, who we're connected to. <laughs> I'll send you some. Great, <laughs> what great, options? Great. <laughs> Sante, it was great to catch up and get to know you. We can't wait to greet you and meet you in here in Memphis. Enjoy and safe travels leaving Vegas. 
um, and can't wait to see you the rest of the season. All right, great. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited and I hope I can be in Memphis soon and, and get to try that pizza and that steak and everything. So, so yeah, looking forward to it. Grizz fans, the official Grizzlies mobile app is your key to the game. It's an all-in-one experience updated with even more functionality. You can keep track of a team with news, social media, the schedule, stats, and the standings. And you can log into Grind City Media to watch and listen live to streaming content like The Chris Vernon Show and Rise and Grind. You can check out Grind City Media articles, videos, podcasts, and GCM talent. See what's going on right here at FedEx Forum with our concert and event calendar. Plus, you can find detailed information on seating and concessions with Arena Maps. You can take the app into FedEx Forum as your mobile wallet, use it as your ticket to the game for Grizz Den mobile pickup, and as contact-free payment for Arena concessions. The official Grizzlies mobile app, your key to the game. Have you been told that you snore loudly, making choking noises, or gasp for air while sleeping? If so, you may have obstructive sleep apnea. One in four adults in the United States has obstructive sleep apnea. If left untreated, it can cause morning headaches, daytime sleepiness, high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, or diabetes. Call Mid-South Pulmonary and Sleep Specialist PC, the official pulmonary and sleep practice of the Memphis Grizzlies at 901-276-6507. WinBet is live in Tennessee and bringing you the action of real money sports betting right in the palm of your hand. Now you can get in on the action with all of your favorite teams across NBA, NFL, NHL, MLB, MLS, and more. Don't forget to take advantage of the generous promos, great odds, and unique parlays available in Tennessee on the WinBet app. Head to the App Store to download the WinBet app and sign up today. First-time bettors will receive a risk-free sports bet of up to $500. Terms and conditions apply for all promotion. Get the details at winbet.com. W-Y-N-N-B-E-T dot com. Must be 21 or older and present in Tennessee. Gambling problem? Call the Tennessee Red Line. 1-800-889-9789. The best NBA slash rap slash music collab. There's a long history of this in the NBA. Jason Kidd, Gary Payton, Allen Iverson, Ron Artest, Chris Webber, Kobe, Jack, Damian Lillard. Dame Dalla, Lou Williams, Lonzo Ball. I feel like that's in the future for the Grizzlies. It should be, right? We should get like John Jaren to maybe we should do a song together. Join Lang Whitaker and me, Kelsey Ray Johnson, every Thursday as we debate the hottest topics in the NBA. I am HO on GrindCityMedia.com, YouTube, and our social channels. We welcome you back to Rise and Grind. We go from Santi Saldama, Aldama to now Pete Pranica live in studio with us. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. It's good to be with you. It's good to be back from Vegas. <laughs> A fun Vegas trip, though. How great was it to just be back amongst like the NBA family? When I was driving in here, the, th the thought that overwhelmed me was gratitude mm -hmm. that we could have Summer League, which we did not have last year. Uh, for the first time since March of 2020, I could actually be courtside and call a game, uh, albeit Summer League for NBA TV. It wasn't a Grizzlies game. Well, one of them was a Grizzlies game, actually. Um, just the fact, Summer League is just such a huge reunion of the NBA family. And you're sitting there courtside, and somebody grabs you from behind, and it's Joey Crawford. And you see coaches and general managers and players and so many people around the league. And everybody had this sense of maybe we're getting – closer to normal because now we're having these games uh you know like i said i was able to broadcast from courtside the team benches weren't as separated as they were in the bubble and in the last regular season so you know hopefully we're turning a corner um but it's it, summer league even before even pre-covid was just a lot of fun mm -hmm. because it is uh i think they called it the uh, you know the nation's house party <laughs> because it's uh you know former players current players NBA legends are there. You know, you turn around, oh, there, hey, there's Spencer Haywood. You know, what's going on? Um, and it's just, it's a lot of fun. 
Mm-hmm. We, I think with the, the, the beauty of it and the goodness of it, and Jessica mentioned it, was that coming off of the Olympics to have Summer League and then to see the reunion because it was just like everyone there to see LeBron and Russell Westbrook come together and then to see the Grizzlies. It felt like the whole team showed up in Vegas to support the Summer League team. And the, the idea of we haven't seen that in such a long time, and to see them sitting in the stands. What was it like for you? Because you had that one Grizzlies game to see Ja, Brandon, Dylan all kind of hanging out. It was great to see them in person. <laughs> and, and, and it's funny, too, because because I stayed at the team hotel, and for the very first time, I got to meet Sonia Rahman oh, wow. and Darko Ryakovich. Oh, wow. You know, I had seen them do the interviews mm-hmm. at halftime with Fish, but I never had had the opportunity to actually talk to them <laughs> you know and Darko's asking me about uh about my heritage because he, he recognized my name he's like well you know is is, is that is Serbian is that Yugoslavian it's like no it's Polish so we had this conversation yeah, so you have these conversations which which is really cool and there's been a long-standing tradition where the current players come and visit mm-hmm. summer league and and show support which I think is is really great and of course Las Vegas and, and impact training is is one of the places and they're places out in LA that guys are going to train so they're out there anyway but then to show up and and be front row uh, is is really it's important for the team building process well and some really important period in that you get to get a first look at some new players even though second year guys there as well it's really all about the rookies when when you get down to it and for the Grizzlies to have the opportunity to see Zaire Williams to see Santi Aldama Eve Pons out there as well what were some of your biggest takeaways from the action from the Grizzlies on the court well, I, I like Santi Aldama and what he was able to do. Um, you realize that Loyola of Maryland, the competition level isn't really, really like the SEC or the mm-hmm. ACC or, or the Big Ten. Um, like his basketball intelligence. And the same for Zaire Williams. Um, the athleticism is going to be there. Now, they have to deal with the consistency because one night he's great from three and the other night, not so much, but you see the bounce, you see the athleticism, uh, you see the, ma- the maturity from a basketball standpoint, and he'll continue to work on that. And so this is a, this is a pick that the Grizzlies are looking for more of an upside by, by selecting him, and I think that he will, uh, he will validate uh, what they thought of him. Mm-hmm. And then I think, Pete, for me, my first time hearing about the 5,000-calorie diet was from you on the broadcast, and then that took a whole nother life of the story. Everyone brought it up. And I, and I was amazed that it did take on a life of its own because he said it himself at the introductory <laughs> press conference. So people, listen to the press conferences. Um, yeah, and I mean, I just kind of tossed it out there because I'm like, well, yeah, he said it at the press conference, and it's like, okay, well, yeah, that, that, that is a rather, rather large diet, and I might have actually myself been on a 5,000 calorie diet in Vegas. I had some amazing, <laughs> amazing meals in Las Vegas. Um, but, and, and it was so late at night that a lot of people didn't see Zach Kleiman's presser draft night mm-hmm. where he said that, you know, they do the physical testing. And one of the physical tests they do, they, they have the force plates on the ground. And I guess Zaire showed greater lower body strength than anybody else currently on the Grizzlies mm-hmm. roster. Wow. Okay, so there is room on his body clearly to add strength, to add weight. And that's one of the things about our performance team, that they're very, very good at being able to analyze an athlete's body and say they are able to add muscle here. They're able to add weight and strength here. And so then they can target the training program just as they did with Ja. Because I, I had a conversation with somebody uh, that worked with Ja, and I said, well, you know, God, he's, he's so slight of frame. How durable is he going to be? And they said, oh, you have no idea how strong this kid really is. Wow because they, they do these, these physical tests and, and understand how, how the physiology and the kinesiology of their body. And so they'll do the same thing with uh, Zaire. I don't think he'll be on 5,000 calories forever, but <laughs> uh, at, le- at least in the short term. That's hard to sustain. What was the best thing you ate in Vegas? Best thing I ate in Vegas probably was at Cipriani. I had um, ricotta gnocchi with a gorgonzola cream sauce. Oh. That was just That's a lot of cheese. It was it was it was just ridiculous. It was like, oh. And I don't think I've ever ha- I've had potato gnocchi, but I've never mm-hmm. had ricotta gnocchi. I've never even, I've never I don't I've had yeah, I've had potato gnocchi, but I've never had that either. I've yeah. never I've never heard of it. Yeah, it was it was I like ricotta. I like gnocchi. So I would like to try it. I, gorgonzola is a, a wild card though. Sometimes I like gorgonzola cheese and sometimes it's a little too much. I was a little concerned about it, but 
there were several preparations for the gnocchi and, and choices of sauce. Okay. And I asked the waiter, mm -hmm. and I said, I said, now gorgonzola can be a little, to your point. And he said, no, 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 you need to do the gorgonzola sauce. It is not <laughs> too crazy. And it was, it was fabulous. I need to look up a recipe and see if I can actually replicate that myself because it was mm. amazing. Please make it for us if okay. you do. Thank you. <laughs> it, okay. it definitely does sound good. And so <laughs> you got a chance to see the first time look at, at, at our rookies. What did you think about our sophomores? Desmond Bing, Xavier Tillman, Killian Tilly. I mean, they were the stars earlier in the summer league, and they got to, have, they got to experiment with their roles. What did you think and, and make out of it? I think if the Grizzlies played their sophomores, they win the Summer League Championship <laughs> going away. Desmond Bain is, is Summer League MVP. Um, Desmond has always played with a level of confidence, and you really, really saw that, I, I think. And coming out of uh, Salt Lake City and then the 32-point game that he had was, was just phenomenal against Brooklyn. Um, I probably was... If you're asking me who – I kind of expected that from Des, mm -hmm. to be honest. Um, I was most impressed probably by Xavier Tillman's ability to distribute the basketball and initiate the offense, which I thought was really cool. Um, and then Killian Tilly. We hadn't seen very much from him outside of, I think, the one Sacramento game that was kind of a, almost a throwaway game, didn't really matter in the standings, and he played really well. Uh, and I – John Conchar initiating offense yeah. <laughs> and double doubles in the first couple of games, which I thought was was really good as well. To your point, Megan, I was intrigued by how Darko Ryakovich approached this. We're going to have different guys initiate the offense. Mm -hmm. uh, there really wasn't a true point guard when they were playing the majority of the sophomores. So it was an opportunity for experimentation. And I think when you look at Summer League, what it does, it allows you to be uh, a, a mad professor, if you will. It, it's a laboratory for you to figure out, okay, what other things can we do? Can Desmond Bain really be a primary ball handler and let Ja play off the ball? I don't think we'll see Xavier Tillman necessarily being a, 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 a dominant ball handler, but we know that he can make the right play, that he can make the right read and make the right pass. And so I, I think that was uh, really interesting to watch, that there wasn't a true point guard out there. Although, to be fair, Desmond Bain at TCU was a playmaker as well. Mm -hmm, he was. I think it's so interesting, too, because that's where when you look at the rookies and someone like Zaire Williams, your point guard's going to be Job Morant. So there's a certain degree of how much can you take. And, yes, you get your feet wet and you start getting into it. But it's going to unlock his game to the next level when it's not an experimentation on who's on the ball. It's, it's John Morant. <laughs> right, right. And when you think about it uh, – I saw Zaire after the, uh, after the Brooklyn game, and he says, it's great to play in front of fans. I've basically had one practice, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, because the NBA calendar didn't turn until August the 6th when they were going out to Vegas anyway, so he couldn't participate in Salt Lake City, couldn't really be officially part of the team because the trade hadn't been completed. And so, yeah, I've, I've got one practice, and now I'm playing NBA basketball. So uh, the, sky, the sky's the limit for him. Taylor Jenkins is very, very happy with his performance. So uh, I'm very eager to see – how he matures and grows into this role uh, with the Memphis Grizzlies. Yeah, and then you, you talk about, like, just kind of not having that practice. Santi said, said the same thing. And then after last night's game, a lot of the players talked about the chemistry because with Summer League, a lot of these guys are new, new to knowing each other, and you're throwing some groups together, and it is cool to see them build that chemistry so fast. And all the games that you called in Vegas, the other storyline is, like, the G League players or guys vying for a spot. What is it like to kind of see those guys – um, kind of step into action, step into play, and kind of get their moment. Yeah, I mean, you, you really root for guys like Shaq Buchanan mm -hmm. because you want to see them get to the next level. And the next level, you know, could be another G League contract. It could be an opportunity in Europe or it could be an opportunity, uh, you know, with, with an NBA club. That's what's so exciting about this because everybody knows about the Cade Cunninghams of the world. Okay, we get that. We, we know that they are going to have the focus on them. And the top draft picks, I thought, showed out very well in Las Vegas. But the other piece of it is that you've got scouts from the G League, you've got scouts from Europe, and these are, these are guys auditioning for a job. Yeah. And it's really cool to, to, see that, to see them have that opportunity. So let's talk about the, the big Grizzlies news that popped off. Non-Summer League related was the trade of uh, 
Oh, Eric Bledsoe going to the Los Angeles Clippers. So many names involved in the situation as we get a clearer picture of maybe what the Grizzlies were thinking in the original Jonas Valanciunas trade and now what that return looks like. Patrick Beverly, Rajon, Rajon Rondo, whatever that's going to be, and Daniel Arturo. All three of those guys, that trade comes through. We got the press release yesterday. Do you think we see all three of them in Grizzlies uniforms when the season begins, or is this just the beginning of another domino to fall? Potentially. I think there have to be other dominoes to fall because mm-hmm. right now the roster is really, really crowded. Now, Killy and Tilly were signed to a two-way contract. Um, of those of those three, if you were asking me to, to pick one that would stick with the Grizzlies, I would, um, I would definitely go with Patrick Beverly. Mm-hmm. I mean, he fits yeah. grit grind. I mean, I don't want to say he's Tony Allen 2.0, but that's kind of the analog. Um, however, I will say if – Rajon Rondo is on this roster. A couple of years ago, I had the opportunity to do playoff games for NBA TV, and Rondo was with New Orleans. And in talking with Alvin Gentry, who was the coach at the time, he says, you cannot believe what an amazing influence Rajon Rondo is on young players. Mm. And he and Anthony Davis had this real synergy. I don't know if it was synergy, because he would call Anthony Davis like at 3 in the morning, and it's like, man, I'm watching this video, and on this, we need to do this, and you need to do that. And that's Rondo. He l- devours videotape and wants to share his knowledge with other players. And so if you were looking for a veteran mentor uh, and student of the game to work with Ja, you could do far worse than Rajon Rondo. That's so true. It's one, it, I feel like we're sitting in this because when the, when the announcement came out, the news when Woj dropped it, you know, we have now um, made it official about the trade. You do sit and think, like, this could be good. This could be really, really great. I mean, Patrick Beverly tweeted out grit and grind. So is he saying that he definitely wants to be, be in Memphis? But it always comes that storyline is, do these guys want to come to Memphis? Do these guys want to come to the city? We, you know, we just went, we just went through this with Igudala. Now we're going through it again. Like, Memphis is a, is a great place to be. And when you think about what the Grizzlies did last season, you would think that we're right on the cusp. You want to come and play with these young guys. Well, I've always felt that. Ja Morant is going to be very, very attractive. You want to play with Ja. Mm-hmm. You want to play with Jaron. And one of the things that you continue to hear as you go around the NBA is that players like and respect this organization because of the way the players are treated. They understand the ardent fervor of this fan base. And so, no, is it Miami? No. Is it New York? No. Is it L.A.? No. But... There are a lot of things to recommend Memphis to a guy who really wants to play winning basketball. Taylor Jenkins has a very good reputation around the league as being a guy, hey, I want to play for this guy. I want to play for this guy. I want to play for this organization because they they treat their players really well. The city is totally behind the team. And, oh, yeah, they got John Morant, who could be a multiple-time All-Star and who's going to make me look good and throw lobs and do all kinds of really, really cool stuff. And I'll be on the highlight shows. So, um and oh, by the way, Tennessee doesn't have a personal income tax. <laughs> and look, players and their agents are going like, you know, Tennessee doesn't have a state income tax. Mm-hmm. You're going to take more of your money home. Or as Brendan Haywood, my uh, broadcast partner, said, you got to get your paper right. <laughs> Cost of living's good here, too. I was going to say, you can get a exactly. big house. <laughs> yes, but, for, I mean, for not very much money. You already relatively are getting speaking. pretty good contracts at that point. You've made mm-hmm. your money, but yeah. I'm exactly. saying, there's opportunity there along the way. Pete. We're like, what, a month and a half away from training camp? What do you do between then now? Are there any other trips in your plans? Are you doing anything fun? Uh, yeah, there, there, are, there are trips planned. Let's see, Notre Dame-Toledo football game, September Ooh. the 11th. That's, mm. that's in the hopper. Uh, well, we also have the Grizzlies Regional Caravan. Uh, oh, so, so you'll be traveling with that? Be going, to, cool. be going to Birmingham, throw out the first pitch in Birmingham. <laughs> threw out a first pitch la- uh, a couple years ago in, uh, in Little Rock and managed to get it over the plate, so mm-hmm. I, was, I was pretty psyched about that. Um, yeah, I mean, right now it's just trying to clean out your files and just get ready for the season because, again, hopefully we are on the road, we are traveling, things are back to normal. We really don't know at this point. Um, so yeah, so I mean, it's just kind of kind of getting prepared and and also getting getting your rest right, getting your body right, 
Even for broadcasters, we we try to get our bodies <laughs> right before before the rigors of the road. So yeah, that that's what's uh, left on the agenda. It's crazy that we're already here. It's crazy to think that we've gotten this far. That I feel like we just crowned an NBA champion. We literally just we crowned did. an NBA <laughs> yeah. champion. I know when I say that, it comes out it's like we really did just crown an NBA champion, and now we're getting up ready for a season that I know we still have questions and we're still trying to figure some things out. But it is exciting to think about that we are close to that especially you have summer league where you have some fans there we're getting closer to maybe a new normal but you know it's a new season it definitely will be i feel badly for the people who work in the nba because they have just careened from yeah. finals mm -hmm. to draft to summer league and now they're going to have to figure out and i was told talking with somebody in the nba league office that the medical department is going to drive how next season is going to unfold. So they've got to figure out the protocols. They mm -hmm. figure out the protocols for Summer League, and now you're going to have to say, okay, now we're now what are we going to do if we're going to have 30 teams flying all over the country and, and playing in different arenas? So, so that has to be worked out. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of work to be done right now, and if you work in the NBA League office, you have had zero time for a vacation. Oh, we still need a schedule. Like, we're still waiting for that schedule uh, to come out. Uh, little Birdie told me that probably within the next – 10 days to two weeks for sure. Okay. I will keep my eyes mm -hmm. peeled for that. And we will cross our fingers <laughs> That's that you guys get back on the road. Too. Okay. Oh, that, that, is, that is like Christmas Day it when is. the schedule comes out. <laughs> then it feels real. Like, we, when, until you have the schedule, it's all hypothetical. Like, you don't know how the season even Hockey looks. Hockey already has their schedule. So I was just like, been sitting here with I'm like, how does the NHL already have their schedule? Where you need to, I mean, I get why because we, they've done a lot. But that makes, it does make it feel like, okay. Yeah, it's happening. They, they do start earlier. Well, that's the big thing is you look at the schedule like, okay, where do we have days off? I, <laughs> do you have yeah, a day off in San you. Francisco? <laughs> do you have a day off in Washington? That's My true. friends are so sick of me answering, I cannot tell you until the NBA schedule comes out. I have like four weddings that I'm in next year. And they're like, when can you come? Can you come to the Bachelorette? And I'm like, put a pin in it. I will let you know. The second the schedule comes out, mm -hmm. I will set up my big board. I will pull And you're also, that, you're, you're also that bad friend. All the other girls I are know, saying, all the, the everyone worst. else, all the other friends are saying, oh, girl, I'll be there for you. We'll do this. And like, we don't know Jessica. She says the NBA waiting for a basketball <laughs> game. I know the worst is when the schedule comes out and there's a game on every single one of those wedding days. So. Right, right. Yeah, when, <laughs> the, when the schedule thing. comes out, I just grab a bunch of, uh, you know, the, the wallet size cards and mm -hmm. I just hand them out to my friends like, here's where I'm going to be for the next six months. <laughs> if you're going to be here, let's hang out. Let's go. <laughs> Let me know. Well, Pete, we appreciate you coming in and hanging out with us. I know, you, I know you've been on, on the road, been on some trips, so we appreciate you coming in early in the morning to break all of Summer League and the NBA action down. It is, we're just a matter of weeks away. Just a matter of weeks away before training camp, and we'll see who's going to make the roster, who's going to be fighting for a spot for the roster. And Pete will always be the, our guy to tell us what's going on. Thank you. Thanks <laughs> for having me. We'll see you back next time. All right, we have to take a quick break. We got off the grind some big breaking NFL news, Megan. We'll get to all that and more when we come back. So you know how part of the reason they did the possession arrow is because referees can't throw a ball six feet in the air right. straight up. Now we have drone technology. <laughs> <laughs> so we put the ball on a drone. On a drone. Fly it over the thing. Have the drone sponsored. Boop. Have it spo you sponsored. You put a camera up there. Put yeah. a sponsor on it. Hey, guys, it's time for the Mountain Dew drone jump ball. <laughs> thing flies out there. Perfect every time. Boop. Get your sports betting picks and trends with Lang Whitaker and Rob Fisher, The Odds Couple. Toyota's national sales event is on with great deals on the best-selling car, Toyota Camry, and the stylishly affordable Corolla. Now through September 7th, get $1,000 customer cash on any new 21 Corolla, Corolla Hybrid, or Corolla Hatchback, or get an exciting new 21 Camry. Now with 2.49 APR financing plus 750 TFS finance cash. With approved credit through TFS, excludes Camry TRD. For complete details, go to buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Need some barbecue nachos, brisket, ribs, maybe a cheese and sausage plate? The Rendezvous is now open for curbside and carryout. They also deliver through a few of the popular delivery apps. While not much changes in that alley basement, you will see a few small differences and additions. They are open from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday and for the first time ever, they have dessert, key lime pie tart, chocolate chest pie tarts, and so much more. Spend some time downtown and visit our friends at The Rendezvous, a family-owned restaurant in downtown Memphis Alley since 1948. 
Grizz fans, the official Grizzlies mobile app is your key to the game. It's an all-in-one experience updated with even more functionality. You can keep track of a team with news, social media, the schedule, stats, and the standings. And you can log into Grind City Media to watch and listen live to streaming content like The Chris Vernon Show and Rise and Grind. You can check out Grind City Media articles, videos, podcasts, and GCM talent. See what's going on right here at FedEx Forum with our concert and event calendar. Plus, you can find detailed information on seating and concessions with Arena Maps. You can take the app into FedEx Forum as your mobile wallet, use it as your ticket to the game for Grizz Den mobile pickup, and as contact-free payment for Arena concessions. The official Grizzlies mobile app, your key to the game. Have you been told that you snore loudly, making choking noises, or gasp for air while sleeping? If so, you may have obstructive sleep apnea. One in four adults in the United States has obstructive sleep apnea. If left untreated, it can cause morning headaches, daytime sleepiness, high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, or diabetes. Call Mid-South Pulmonary and Sleep Specialist PC, the official pulmonary and sleep practice of the Memphis Grizzlies at 901-276-6507. Rise and grind. It's time to go off the grind. We'll start with a little breaking news. Tim Tebow has announced that he has been cut by the Jacksonville Jaguars after his attempt at coming back as a tight end. He tweeted, thankful for the highs and even the lows, the opportunities and the setbacks. I've never wanted to make decisions out of fear of failure, and I'm grateful for the chance to have pursued a dream. Thank you to the Jaguars organization and everyone who has supported me in this journey. Good for Tim. I mean, I feel yeah. like here's the thing. <laughs> He couldn't stay on the team. His life as a tight end probably wasn't going to work out. We, we, we saw the tape. The tape did not lie. Uh, I appreciate that he does not allow the fear of failure to hold him back from trying something. Mm-hmm. It is something that he was passionate about. Urban Meyer and the Jaguars organization gave him the opportunity to do that. Sometimes things don't work out, and that's mm-hmm. okay, too. No, I mean... I feel bad from this since I know there's going to be a lot of haters who are going to be like, oh, my goodness. And I do hope that we are, we are a society who, like, regardless if you agree with how he got that opportunity, he got it. And it can't go back on him for, some, for wanting to try out something that didn't work out. It didn't work out. Whatever. I hate that CJ's not here for it. I know CJ would have probably had a whole parade. Would have had a whole parade of it. Of, of of but how about Roser? What do you think? What do you think about Tim Tebow? C-note after C-note. Put my remix on a kilo. Thought I wouldn't make it. Now I'm winning Timothy Tebow. Rick Ross. Shout out to Rick Ross. Um, I think it's the only time I've ever heard Tim Tebow shout out a rap song. I love Tebow. Mm -hmm. I love Tebow. And I think he gets too much hate. uh, Too many haters. Because the guy believes so strongly in Jesus and his faith. And he's so strong in his faith that I think people hate on him for that. Like. Whatever, man. He's a positive guy. The guy's got a great look on life, you know? Good for him. I love Tebow. Well, we'll see what Lee does next. Cause like, I, oh, I, the boy. first thing I thought about he was, like, He can always be on TV. Hockey? Well, no, well, I thought, well, <laughs> will the SEC Network still say that spot for him on SEC Nation? All right. Is that, like, you know, does it feel – Does it is it one of those jobs where you feel as if, like, okay, you well, you backed away from it, you know, now you get it back because, they, they you know, the, Jordan Rogers kind of stepped in there, too, for that. So I do think – what happens next we i thought he was a great broadcaster i thought like that was the career lane for him but obviously he wanted to still try out to be a baseball player now football go back to football um what does he do you know i think that's the kind of the next move but i think give people their space because i'm sure it's probably a devastating as for him because he's yeah. talked about how he he has wanted to give it his all so you know i hate to see it but it's the right thing you did it it didn't work out you know, I know he's faith based, so like he'll be fine. He will figure it out. Yeah. And if yeah. he wants Tim to try Tebow's another a... sport, he'll do it. Like nothing has stopped him. If he so wants to far. go be a pastor and a, or go be a, a missionary, like he could do a public speaker. Public have you ever, spe- have you ever done something? Speaker. Like he could do any of that. Have you ever tried something back out where like you're like, you know, I just really want to try it out. Like I just I don't know what's gonna happen. I just really want to try it out. And maybe I got the opportunity, maybe I got that tryout or something where because I knew someone and knew someone. We've all kind of been there a little bit. That's yeah. that's the only thing that I there's moments where I, I disagree, but then there's moments where I have, to, I have to think back and look at my life and say, 
Well, we do know that life is all about who you know. And how many times have you had, we had to call someone because, you know, a friend of someone or I interned and intern and that person knew someone like what from first second after my junior year, I thought that I could be a volleyball player, have never played volleyball, thought that I just my sister was an amazing volleyball star. I said, you know what? Now is the time I chose basketball in high school. I didn't want to do both. But if you did both, you had no life that first semester of high school. So I was like, you know what? Junior year, they were doing they were doing a, an open tryout. I was like, I'm going to do it. Oh, let me tell you, honey, only made it one day in that <laughs> volleyball camp. Didn't work out. I felt sort of a way about it. I was like, oh, man, like they all they were all looking at me and all the girls were probably there like laughing at me. And I was like, no, but that was something that I wanted to try out and do. And I probably got the opportunity because I was a student worker in the athletic department for, for, the, the, for the last three years. And like, oh, you know, Megan, you want to do it? Come on. I had no experience and I failed miserably, but it's OK. And I felt I'm like, you know what? I did it for me. I didn't do it for you. You got to try. Yeah. I mean, truly, that's how you find out where you are supposed to be at any given time. And Tim Tebow has obviously already had a tremendous amount of success mm -hmm. in a football career, uh, giving it his best go in a baseball career, doing the TV side of things. If the lane is there, I applaud someone who is not afraid of failing and taking advantage of the opportunity. Like, it's not his fault he got the opportunity. What are you going to do? Say you take no? out <laughs> on Urban Meyer and, you know, yeah. other staff. Now on TiVo. If someone comes to me and says, Megan, we can give you a million dollars. Do you want to try for this acting gig? I'm taking it. For this acting gig. Jess, do you juggle? I don't have sure. a, I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to try. Love to try. <laughs> We're going to give you a million dollars to join the circus. Do you, do you want to try that? Yep. I, I really do. What? What's mm -hmm. the what's the old adage like? Even if you have to hang around carnies, fine. Oh. Well, <laughs> you know. Is there anything you would ever stay try away out? from the meth? What? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say though, like, um, say yes, learn later. Like, mm -hmm. I, I had a professor who taught us that early on. Like, if someone asks you, "Can you do this?" You say yes. I had an acting coach who said that. Like, if you're going and auditioning for a role, and they're like, "Hey, can you walk on stilts?" You say, "Yeah." And then you teach yourself how to walk on stilts so you can do the role. And like, there's some degree where I'm sh there are certain things that you probably can't do and you shouldn't do. Like, I'm not gonna go try to be a surgeon. You need a degree for that. But you can learn along the way and mm -hmm. you never know where you're gonna end up. So we'll see what's next in the Tim Tebow chapter. Mm -hmm. We also learned this morning that some more NBA guys are getting paid. Joel Embiid, it was reported by Ramona Shelburne that sources are saying they're, he's looking at a four year, four year $196 million contract to say with the Sixers. Um, no surprise that the Sixers are going all in on Joel Embiid. That's a lot of money. Um, for the Sixers organization. I know there's still a lot of questions to figure out where Ben Simmons is going to go, but that's a guy that you kind of, you, you definitely want to solidify a spot for the future is to keep Joel Embiid and to pay your star. Yeah, it's reportedly fully guaranteed. So it includes a player option for the final year, but does not include the same provisions that protected the Sixers in case of a catastrophic injury to Embiid. And thus far, he's been able to stay on the court the last couple of seasons for the majority of, mm -hmm. of his playing time. But I also found it really interesting. He negotiated it himself, which is cool. You don't see that a whole lot often. Mm -hmm. And I would love to learn some negotiation skills from Joel Embiid yeah, because it's, it's if you're rare. negotiating that kind of contract, like you did good. It's rare. Didn't I think Spencer Dinwiddie, didn't he do his? Did I he? I think Dinwiddie might have done his. Reggie Miller? Ray Allen did. Mm -hmm. Ray Allen did his deals by himself. Yeah, he's like, why am I kicking, you know, 10% to an agent? <laughs> you know, there's, 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 there's been some guys who've always talked about doing it themselves, especially, especially some old school um, guys who talked about always negotiating their own type of contract. I do think that when you're Joel Embiid of that caliber, you, have you some can leverage. do that. Right. You, right. you can sit down and say, no, nah, that's not going to work for me. As opposed to, you know, probably some of these new guys coming up who, you know, but Joel Embiid has proven himself but Joel Embiid is is quite a character not and I'm not surprised by it but negotiating that type that type of money is like phenomenal to be able to do but Joel did have some like he's Joel Embiid I think I think some of it also is like all the little other things all that are written in in these contracts you know there's so many different little things in NFL and baseball and NBA contracts and I think a lot of guys there are probably a lot of guys that are capable of doing it but they just don't want to 
deal with the stress of it. Yeah. You know, so they just yeah, let my agent handle it's it. It's the verbiage you know? for me because I do yeah. think in some ty- in some contracts with like for just for myself personally, and you a lot of people that do it. You have someone like whether you have like I have two sisters who are lawyers that works out that works out in my favor because sometimes the verbiage, how it's written, how how certain things are said, you got to be very very specific to like make sure you like dive deep into what certain things mean. I'm sure Joel Embiid had someone to just to like probably read over and go right. over it with him, but he could have probably negotiated the number deal. But I'm sure you, 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 everyone should always have a second eye. Just like when you write something, an article, or you have an editor, you should always have just a second eye to look at it. You, I might not need you to help negotiate, but just a second eye to just like double check some things for me. Did you guys, speaking of Spencer Dinwiddie, Roser, did you see that he gets a $1 bonus with the Wizards if mm-hmm. they win a championship? Like that's negotiated in his contract, one single dollar. So if the Washington <laughs> Wizards go all the way, just as we all expect, mm. you will get I'd frame one that dollar. dollar. He probably would frame that dollar, yeah. too. <laughs> frame that dollar. If he ever gets it. Yeah. <laughs> if it ever big happens. if in that situation. That's a really big one. <laughs> big if. Something else that we saw yesterday, Naomi Osaka, um, the tennis phenom, she had a press conference yesterday in preparation for her first tournament since the Tokyo Olympics. Uh, It's the Western and Southern Open taking place in Mason, Ohio. And she began answering questions about her mental health and, you know, a lot of the commentary that had sparked conversations around Naomi Osaka this year and her saying that she was taking pauses from the media. There were some critics who came back and said, well, don't you go do, was it Vanity Fair, the cover she was on? She did a couple. She, She did a couple covers, but Bottom line, those have been done before, yeah, and right. she has a social media presence and basically just running through all of these things. Well, in the meantime, they moved on to more tennis-related questions. One reporter from the Cincinnati Inquirer went back to the mental health side of it, got a little pressy on asking mm-hmm. you know, why it is she feels the way she does about the media and handling situations like press conferences. And Naomi Osaka broke down in the middle of that press conference, and you know, Megan and I talked about showing the video. Do we not show the video? We ultimately decided we don't really need to show the video because it's a very vulnerable moment for Naomi Osaka. She did come back and finish up the press conference, but it's it's hard to watch Mm -hmm. an athlete of her stature, just a human being, obviously going through a tough time right now and struggling to the point where she did have to step away Mm -hmm. yesterday. And she she did she did answer a few questions before um, the Cincinnati newspaper reporter asked. And so, like, to re- to address it again, I know her agent came after back and said that, like, it was the tone and kind of denounced that reporter for, like, even going there because I he – I, did, I watched it on SportsCenter, and so it was like one of those, those one of those situations where I don't know if the reporter got the vibe. Mm-hmm. Got you know, there's some moments where, where you think that like, oh, I would have gotten that feeling, but sometimes people just don't. And Naomi was very adamant about answering the question because there's a one point where the moderator does say like, we can move on to the next question. She was like, no, I've never seen it that way because he did ask her just about kind of how using this this platform does help you. And I, I know that you don't like to. To, to address the media and, and answer some questions, but it does kind of help with some of, you know, your your things that, that, that you're doing off the court. How do you balance that? And she was saying that she never really saw it that way, and she was attempting to answer the question. I do think that her brain going there and trying to express herself mm-hmm. made her kind of like, you know what, kind of pull back a little bit, and it got her emotional. Um, but I did take it as more of as an example of what she's talking about. And she it wasn't – she's not – She's not pretending. This is just very difficult for her. And I don't know if maybe just tennis questions would have been it. And, you know, we've, we've been reporters. I've read the room so many times before. And there are a lot of times where I don't ever want to make an athlete, when I know they're already down and out, or if I, if I know an athlete doesn't feel comfortable talking about something like that, I would never go there. But not everyone thinks There's like that. There's always that one guy. There's always that one person who, who would go there. And I, and I was surprised that people were trying to ask questions along those lines Mm -hmm. and i get some people saying well if you're a reporter you gotta you you have to report on what everyone's one one, you know wondering about but if you think about what naomi has gone through leading up to cincinnati she tweeted the other day before about being there and practicing around that amount of fans and how it was scary for her because she has not been around that you know that many people since the pandemic started but she said it was great to see everyone she's been very vocal about 
preference of helping Haiti and, you know, seeing what happened in Haiti is saying that if whatever I win, my winnings will go all to Haiti in the relief effort. I do think like she was going through so much. She, she's kind of expressed. She's kind of like opening up and showing people that I do think that reporters and I hope everyone takes a, takes a chance for anybody. When you see when someone's going through something like don't potentially go there. Yeah. And when you see when someone is struggling, I love the moderator saying, we'll, we'll pause here. We'll take a moment, you know, and I do think that th there are people who are trying to help. But everyone take note from that. Like someone's when someone's going through something, don't press something or don't even ask about it. How can we help you? What do you want to talk about? One reporter asked that. And I thought, yeah. like, I really respected that. Mm -hmm. A reporter said, okay, how can we, as the media, make this a better situation yeah. for you? And sometimes you have to turn the tables on yourself and, and do the asking about your See, job. I don't know if she was ready for out. that either. I know. But I, but I don't know what Naomi feels because Naomi right. hasn't told us yet. And I don't, I don't know if she wants everyone to watch that video or, or, or to see that press conference. We're waiting to kind of hear from Naomi's side of it. I don't know what the right moment yeah. is because this is still someone that is, you know, fairly young and you're still learning, you're still growing from things. I don't know if it's, for me, what I do normally is I pull, and I don't know what happened behind the scenes, but like I can only tell you from what we've done before for basketball games or after games when someone is going through something, you pull aside the PR person and it's like, do you think they want to talk about that? Or if I know the athlete very well, I'm going to, before those cameras come, mm -hmm. if I can get to them, I know not every time you, you can do it. Do you feel comfortable addressing this? Can I talk to you about this? Or, you know, sometimes sending a DM, I'm like, hey, I'm here. You, you know, I do think sometimes you, you hear names be called out and they try you're like i don't even know who this person is i don't i can't see them i know now things are zoom it feels different i know we're all trying to navigate it but if we could all just give some grace but seeing that was so uncomfortable to watch Naomi go through that i hate that she went through that um my heart goes out to her um and i just hope that she's surrounded by family and friends and media members who she, i hope she feels the love and she did say at the olympics that was the first thing that she was nervous about going out there. But she said to see all the athletes that came up to her and addressing her and saying, like, you know, we support you. You know, you are a voice like I look up to you. And I know people brought up Simone Biles in the press conference y yesterday, too. And you don't got to like, link them what all. What did you talk about? It, it was just it <laughs> just felt like it was too heavy and too much. And it was her first time since the Olympics. And prior to that, mm -hmm. her first time since the French Open, which is when she immediately or originally said she wasn't going to do press conferences. Yeah. But yeah, we we will wait to hear from Naomi Osaka for what is next. I just hope the Women's Tennis Association is fighting for her and trying to figure out ways yeah. that we can help her navigate this, because I know that she is she is playing in this tournament. So how, what can we do to make it better? We can't keep doing the same thing. And I know that people say, well, players have to talk to media and as a media member, I really do think you don't have to. I really that's my, but that's my opinion. It's that, that's on me. It's like I think you we should feel you should feel welcome to and open to. But when someone's going through something, you shouldn't have to. I do get that. Like we want to put we want to help you get your story out there. We want, but there are many people who aren't out there for for the good, and we yes. know some of people like that. Hundred <laughs> percent, like you said. I mean, you're in press conferences, and I have I have said the words to myself. Oh, I'm I'm glad so and so is here because they'll press for that question back when I worked mm -hmm. in local TV and you need that, that bite, that bite is expected. And I don't want to be the person who has to ask for it. That was never me as a journalist in that role, like yeah. to a detriment. I did not want to be that person who pressed the button and got the hot answer or got mm -hmm. the emotional answer because that's just, uh, it's not With my the favorite thing in the world. Like, viral oh. moment. And it's like, we're yeah. so, but we're all, we're but all, we're all waiting for it and we're all moment. ready to show it and ready right. to go in on it. So it's a complicated like back and forth to figure and tennis out. tennis is very different. Goes. It's an tennis, individual it's sport. A very, it's a very different. So yeah. I do, I, my, our normal take is that, well, you ask some of those tougher questions to coaches, you know, or, um, but you don't have, you don't have the same thing. I don't know what the answer is. I just know that if someone says, says that they, they, they need a moment, they need a break. I'm trying. You see, she's trying. Like I'm trying. I just need a moment. The forcing someone to keep going. It just feels so, I hope we've learned from it now. And just kind of like, you know, we'll do two questions, three questions. Or I always say, I love when someone has an opening statement. I love it because I'm going to tell you how far I can That's go. That's the PR in you. That is, that is. <laughs> I love an opening statement because I'm going to tell you how far I can go and I'm going to tell you what I can, what I can say. And then the next question, if you press it, you'll say, um, you know, see my, my as, as I just said, per my opening right, statement, that's like, that's how you kind of keep it there. But I just love a good opening statement. I'm going to tell you how far I can go. If you, if you press me on it, I'm going to repeat the same thing that I just said. I think that's fair. Yeah. Let's talk about, um, Jay Cutler. <laughs> oh, goodness. 
<laughs> what a transition. Uh, J, J, J. J, 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 J. J Cutler. Cuddy does it. <laughs> Jay Cutler reportedly had a yeah, he's, he he's, had a deal lined up it. with Uber, so it's true. According to Jay Cutler, according to himself, he had a deal <laughs> with Uber, and he has lost that deal with Uber. He tweeted he lost his commercial with Uber Eats, partnering with the NFL. Was going to film in LA. Views aren't aligned. Guess they don't like future school board members. Freeze up my. Weekends. This comes after Jay Cutler has gotten into it in regards to the vaccination of children and mm-hmm. masking in schools. He is the father of children. He is a Tennessee resident. And he also tweeted asking, how do you run for school board? Mm-hmm. I need this info. He is all aboard getting on the school board. Yeah. He's um, been- He's been very vocal, like all week on word. Twitter. He yeah. just joined Twitter last week. Like he just, well, he just got his like a new Twitter account. He just got verified. He's been super vocal on Twitter. And him and Clay Travis, they, they, they I'm, I guess they have schools in around the same area of Williamson County, outside of Davidson County of Nashville, and they are vocal about their views on should school board members or should schools um, allow them to mandate masks and school system. Jay has been vocal on Twitter about it. Uber came out with a statement and said that, look, we are proud. Our company is proud to help people get vaccinated. That's been one of our that's been one of the things that we are working on. And so we support those who help that, you know, that message. If they did, then they'll be going up against each other. And Jay has been tweeting up a lot about how to run for school board. He has posted about, he's posted school board members. I don't know if he's serious or if he's like pretending or fake. I think he's serious. um, About it. They, as a family, and back when he was with Kristen Cavallari, they've never vaccinated their children. They have always been on on that side of the spectrum there. Um, And then moving forward. There's certain ones. Yes. Yes. They've they've been vocal about vaccination. Right. They they have never shied from being um, Mm -hmm. forward in their conversation in regards to that. It was funny when you sent this story last night. I went to Jay Cutler's Twitter account and was just trying to find the beginning and he's tweeted like hundreds of times in this last week since he joined mm-hmm. Twitter. It has been every day, all day. Well, he joined, constantly. he got on Twitter because he thinks, because he was vocal on Instagram and he thought that Instagram was about to kick him off. So he said, like, well, let me get on Twitter because I think Instagram is about to kick me off. But him and Clay Travis have been going back and forth about their viewpoints and what they think. And so now he's, he's, he's responding to fans who are supporting him or sort of responding to people who think that Uber should not have canceled this commercial um, that he was supposed to be a part of. Uh, I don't. I don't know how he thought that. Like, I do think companies have the right to say, "Well, you know what? Your views don't align with our views, and we, you know we're just going to go a different direction with this." Yeah, yeah uh, I'm there's just confused why uh, Uber Eats partnered with Jay Cutler. It is, that's <laughs> Robbie. <laughs> Robbie. Robbie. Uh, the, our technical director here is also wondering the same thing. Well, and no, Jay, Jay Cutler slander shall prosper. I, Jay, I, 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 Jay I like Cutler, Jay, Cutler. Jay Cutler smoking a cig was my um, does picture it. on my fantasy football team for. Yeah. Years. I'm going to tell you he why. Was my logo. Don't I gotta, care. I'm going to tell you. Okay. I think why. So Jay Cutler has um, like his own. Uh, beat produce thing it's called cuts by jay cutler where he sends out <laughs> like so i'm so serious so they you can How get like you know different this she's a wealth <laughs> of knowledge from her. you know it, it is incredible like he, you can like it's like a it's like i think it's like a monthly little package where you can get like certain meats where it's like beef it was on the oh, show meats. i thought you yeah. said beats no like like, like le- legit like you know remember, remember on the show they, talk, they talked about he was fine i never watched oh. an episode well very the cavalier they talked about how he was getting into like the butcher company stuff. Oh, okay. so you can get certain type of I, that part i don't know like different produce okay and and so that's what the cuts come from cuts what? by jay cutler so i don't know if that's how the uber eats thing happened I, that's what i was i was assuming um, that's you how can the order a, a gift box. A Labor Day I'm gift box is 165. This. The ultimate meat gift box, See, 175. Hey. You've got all sorts. About this is not cuts. for someone who's vegan right now or vegetarian. Like this is a yeah, no, this is a what, what strictly meat company. Yeah, this looks really Jay good. Cutler's lifelong obsession with great steak stretches back to his small town Indiana upbringing in the American heartland. So when Jay told his friend, famed butcher Pat Lafreda, about his childhood goal of opening a meat shop, they knew they had to make it a reality. 
level it up was for on the, the show. subscription box game. It was a joke. No, well, so I thought I thought it was a joke on the show because remember, so in the show, Kristen would always say, "Oh my gosh, Jay finding another hobby, right? Just like finding something, something <laughs> to do. He loves to go hunting, trying to figure out. It was part of the part of the storyline of saying, "What is Jay going to do after football?" That was it. And so I didn't know when the show went off, I didn't know this was like, like he was legit going to do this, but it did happen. And, um, I do, it's very, it's, it's successful. So that's why, that's how I got, how they probably partner with Uber Eats because it, they do send you, like you said, they send you like a box where you can choose out. Do you want deer? Do you want turkey? Do you want steak? You know, so oh, deer there you go. Is so good. Wow. Deer meat is so good. This is not a show for vegans if you're listening, but I agree. No, no, it is not. <laughs> it, is, it is not, not a at show all. For Bottom vegans. line, we'll see if Jay Cutler ends up on a school, school board, but you will not see him in an Uber Eats ad. No Uber Eats. Which no I think it's best Eats. anyway. I, I, I really do. Think he lives best. in Tennessee. He's going to be fine because Billy just signed an executive order banning yeah. school boards yeah, from I don't requiring think, masks. So I don't, like, I, yeah, but I don't, I don't think that if Reed legalities I don't, that ain't gonna stand i don't think it, i don't think it shelby stand. county schools but, is continuing to wear masks today yeah but I, I think you, you, like i've seen some people so like lawyers tweeting about the and they're like yeah this is the only way he can do this and this does not apply here so we'll see anyways um <laughs> but jay keller i will say since him and Kristen cavallari have been they've been what anti-vax for like they've just not they don't vaccinate they are Outside the ones that their kids have to have, absolutely right. Like they don't vaccinate mm-hmm. their kids. They're they're. I at least I you know what I at least respect that because at least you've kind of been that way since day one. I don't agree with you, but like yeah. at least you've been that way since the beginning. Whereas seemingly we've got like now <laughs> millions of people that aren't. So yeah, <sighs> we'll see what happens with 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 all. We, of that. we know where to put that. That was pop. That was a pop yeah. story or an off the grind story. We settled on off the grind because I don't know where Jay Cutler fits in the storylines of storylines. It could anymore. be in a Foodie Friday. I didn't it. realize mm-hmm. that he has such a connection Cut, to I, the meat. I was someone. I think I had news when I did it. It said it was a really good man, like a gift to give to a guy. It's a you know, just saying. Just for if you, but if you don't disagree agree, with masks and love meats, do we have a company? <laughs> for I, don't <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right, Roser, we are we are running on time here in this situation, but you teased your Roser room, oh, yeah, so yeah, I yeah. feel like we've got it. We've got to From toss Jay it Cutler to your to Roser's room. your Roser room, and, and that'll be our nice segue into pop. So oh. teach us, John okay. Roser. All right, I, I typed this out a little bit. So oh, okay, let me, uh, let's get to it. No, 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 it's just short. This just, this is so I wouldn't forget. Uh-huh. So that, exactly is that important? Is. Yeah, yeah. I brought this up yesterday on the Chris Vernon show too. I one one part of it, but I'll I'll do both parts today. Um, to Memphis drivers, flashing yellow light is not a four way stop. <laughs> Were you down here? Yes, it was, it was over here. But I've seen this in multiple yes. parts of the city. Yes. Now. I've seen this happen in multiple parts of the city. A flashing yellow light is not a four way stop. It means proceed through with caution. You slow down going through. The other people on the uh, that would that would be the other sides that are running perpendicular to you, they will have flashing red lights, which means they do stop. Flashing red lights on every traffic light, that is treated as a four-way stop. If you have flashing yellow lights in front of you, proceed with caution. It is not a four-way stop, though. Other thing, Union Avenue is three lanes both ways. So if you are traveling in the left lane you do, and you're turning left, you do not get over into oncoming traffic to turn left. That, that is not a turn lane. <laughs> that is on, you are now in the left lane of the oncoming traffic. Just stay in your left lane going your direction and just stop, turn on your blinker, and you can turn. These are very basic things. Yet I see them violated <laughs> every single day. Espe- like it get, well, especially the Union Avenue turn lane. That gives me so much anxiety when I see it. I'm like, oh my God, someone's going to come and just get drilled by a car. I just don't drive on Union. I try to avoid Union at all costs tr- until you have to get on Union to go to that Chick-fil-A. I try to avoid I, Union. I, I center lane in, or bust. I yes. stay center in the middle lane. lane yep. or bust. And center the lane. second you decide, if you're like behind someone who's a little slow and you get in the left or the right, instant regrets. Yes. Instant regrets. It should true. Just, just stay. 
Stay the path, trust the process. Yeah, that center lane so true. will take yeah, you to Poplar. You'll get here, there eventually. And here are two things to say out of one going, one going eastbound, one going westbound on on Union. Uh, the the far right lane. You, you're going to want to stay out of this during during prime food hours because <laughs> tra- yes. traveling eastbound. Mm-hmm. That Wendy's gets out to the mm-hmm. street. Traveling Popeyes westbound, Popeyes. that Popeyes gets out to the street. Yes, so you need to stay out of those lanes. But people, flashing yellow lights, not a four-way stop. Also, Union Avenue, three lanes both ways. If you're in the left lane and you've got to turn and you have to turn, do not go into the first lane of oncoming traffic. Just stay in that left lane, turn on your blinker, and you can turn. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Rose, for Roser's Room. we got to get a sponsor for Roser's Room. Max Sponsored Maxwell by. Driving School. That's who I took. <laughs> Max, shout out to Max Maxwell. <laughs> That's so funny. The, the the flashing yellow lights thing really resonated because that happened to me yesterday. It happened right to me, here yes. by, right, right here by South, Southwest Community College. There's a flashing yellow lane. I don't know why it's flashing yellow, but the, the person next to me, just stopped. I kept going, and I was like, "Does he not know that you're not supposed to?" Stop? Oh no! It, for me, it, it like held. Me. It was like five minutes. I sat there because there were like ten to twelve cars oh. in front of me, and everybody stopping. I'm like, "This is." Unless bad. you're doing it to be nice, I thought. Now I've done it before because I, I saw that there were so many cars waiting on the other side. I was like, you know, I might stop. I'm like, you just go because obviously you're not going to be able to go. Yeah. But there was there was no traffic, and the guy just stopped. And I was like, dude, like it, I don't know. Yeah, Sometimes it, I think people just see light. And flash, yeah, and then you're and it worried. Freaks them out, yes. And like that's then what your brain is. breaks. Yes. Yeah. And I will say I'm, usually, I'm normally scared because I don't know what the, the other, other people side, are yeah, seeing, and then I'll see that that they have a flashing red light, and I don't know. You're right. I do think we have people who don't. I think sometimes we at this point it does feel as if we're just handing out license. I don't know if this if it's the same criteria. I do feel as if that it was harder to get a license um, back then when I but I, but I'm biased. I sound, I sound a lot like like an old person saying that. Oh, back in my day, you know, we had to read the book, to take the test. It feels like we're just handing them out now. We had to go so, to school. I, we had to go to driver's see, school. See, ha- you don't have to go to driver's school. Yeah, you had school. to log hours, and, like, you kept, like, a little no. handbook. And then even to get your permit, you had to log hours. Mm-hmm. I failed my first permit test. I didn't go to driving school. I had to go back. So I guess I didn't. I guess it was easy for me. <laughs> I didn't get it all back. I didn't go to Did driving school. Did you have to school. parallel park? To get no. your license, neither did I. Yeah, Chris, I didn't had, Chris to growing up in San Francisco, had to parallel park well, in you, his you driver's have to do test. It. Like you have. I think we all should because then I had to learn I never as an adult. Park. I oh, never, I've become all jinx it. it now. You I'm, never do I'm it. Three in a row. But what about three in a row? On like Maine or front? You never. No. Use it. You'll never. just find anywhere else to go. Well, I mean, I live downtown. I just walk. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I just walk places. Or if I'm coming down this way, I'll just park in our garage here That's at work. That's true. Okay. I've options. got two parking two garages options. I can park in That's downtown. True. I have passes to two parking garages. That is true. Okay. All right. Let's do a little pop That's of true. the morning. First up, oh, the rumors are back. Khloe yeah. Kardashian, Tristan Thompson, are they back together? Reports say no. But Daily Chloe, Mail says yes. And Daily Mail says yes. E, Page six says yes. The home of the Kardashians, the one time home e said of maybe. the Kardashians. Oh, I thought they said no. No, so they said maybe because it was on it was on Daily Pop yesterday. Oh. They talked about it like, is it true? And like even it's so weird. I love watching Daily Pop because all now the three people up there usually are friends. There's like they're celebrities yeah. too. And Morgan Stewart's really good friends with Chloe. Yeah. And she's like, I don't know how I feel about this. I'm not sure. You know, they had Tori Spelling on there too as well. It's really weird because it's like they all mix and mingle together, but they said they said that it's been a maybe. It's not a no. But we don't know. Well, one Twitter user decided to make their point on it, saying at this point, Khloe Kardashian has no self worth anyway. To which Khloe Kardashian came back and said, "You're telling me you made an assessment about my life because of a random blog? I think that says more about you than it does about me." Mm-hmm. Okay. Why do celebrities Get read the comments? Chloe. Is my question. Just stay off. Like, well, you, you're you make so much money. Yeah, you're, you have a whole life outside of the other little Twitter trolls of the world. And I get it. it. Sometimes it's, you want to dip in and you want to like speak up for yourself. And I think but, well, that would was, draw you into it. This was a story that went. Like, it was not just that blog. It was no. It's it was a viral it was a, story. It was in a lot yeah. of it was in a lot of places. So think about it, if you're Chloe, and Chloe's gone through so much with her relationship with Tristan Thompson. You know. 
And I don't, we so don't, much. we don't, we don't know what they're doing or what, whatever, but we do know, we do know they're trying to co-parent. Like that, that's what we do know. They're, they're, they are, they are both parents to True. She's three years old. They're trying to co-parent. So I'm sure to see all the comments or think about it. If there was something in the news about me, then you get phone calls from like your sisters, your friends, like, girl, like, is this true? Like that happened to me one time. I was like, cause I kept going back to the same dude too. And then when you, it when was someone, in the news? When some, not the news, but when someone <laughs> sees you or someone right. says something and it just, it's like, it's like, it's telephone. like a telephone. Everyone then calls you, girl, please tell me this ain't true. And then at some point, not even are you doing it to your friends, you start, then you start trying to get on social media and you just start seeing these comments. And Chloe has talked about it. She just talked about it last week. She tweeted out about how um, Twitter gives her anxiety and how anxious she gets. She posted a picture of her and her curly hair and people went in on her again about how she looked and what she was trying to do and what she was trying to sell and, you know, her appearance. So I do think, like, we forget that they're, they are human beings. No matter how much money you have, they are human beings. And someone literally just said, you have no self-worth. I don't know you. You don't know my story. And I got some time today. Yeah, if I, I have, have a lot time, of self-worth. I'm going to tell you, I'm going I'm to I'm clap back, too. So... I don't know. I, I don't know how it's, it's none of my opinion. I mean, it's, it's, it's none of my business on whatever happens, but whatever, whatever. I thought that I guess that it was completely done this time. Like it was over, but I do think when there's one story, usually there and it's multiple stories. Yeah. I do think there might be some truth or, you know, some maybe a little, you know, there. it might be like they decide to go to the movies together just by themselves and let's just see it out, you know, or, Someone might heard of, heard one overheard conversation. one conversation of just being like, "Do you think we could do it?" You know, so they have a child. I get it. Like you have a child. A no child. matter how, it's probably gonna happen for many years. Who cares? Um, something else we saw: Madonna celebrated mm-hmm. her sixty third birthday. I have not followed a lot of Madonna's life recently. I realized oh, you have not. Thus, I was unaware of her twenty seven year old yeah. boyfriend, Madonna, living her best life. She's building a broadcast studio. She bought the weekends home. She's got a lot going on. They celebrated her birthday in Italy along with all her children. And yeah. you don't see her kids all that often, but she posted pictures of them too. Mm-hmm. She she has been with this young guy Two for, years. For, for a minute. Yeah. They've been um, several balconies living their best life. His together. dad gave his blessing. Mm-hmm. Like, so cool. Good for she, them. She's a goat. She, she's a goat. She's do a goat? She can do whatever she wants. She's, I mean, she's a That's legend. Yeah. She, yeah. she is yeah. a legend. She yes. had a whole happy birthday video that she posted where she's eating ice cream. There's so much ice cream on an ice cream cone that I was like, the video was not relevant. So I just chose that one picture. Just, let's just get this one picture because the, uh, the other video might have been, might have been too much for slides, morning, yeah. for well, morning well, time. I mean, what, if Michael Jackson was the king of pop, like she's, the, yeah. she had to be, she's the queen of pop. She's up there. Yeah. yeah. I it's mean, just like, I saw. I, all, I, uh, everyone that she influenced, I mean, it, yeah, it's yeah. Madonna, Madonna I saw I saw a picture legend. of Cher the other day when it was like it was a picture. It was two pictures of Cher in the seventies and Cher in her seventies. She I know stunning. Looks the exact same. Like still amazing. Cher is my girl. Yeah, Cher and Madonna. But happy birthday to Madonna. We also saw on Instagram the official picture of Nicole Ari <laughs> Parker with the whole crew from the Sex and the City reboot that is called um, And So It Goes. And, no, and just like and that. And just like that. And just like that. We knew that Nicole or Ari Parker was rumored to be a part of the movie. We've seen her on set nearby, but no one has like made it very valid and clear that she is going to be one of the cast members. That picture right there just proves it that she's part of the crew. I like. I don't. We don't know what her what her um, what her character is going to be. Is she going to be like the next like hardcore friend group of the four? Not Does quite she sure. just replace Samantha? No. But no, but we still but, have to figure out like what's the storyline with Samantha? What are they doing with that? How are they uh, introducing new friends yeah. and new characters into the show while also still having the old ones? Yeah. There's, there's a lot been to there's out. been there's been a lot of of like kind of some theories of like where there's where it's gonna go and where it's gonna take and who how we think it's all gonna play out, who's a part we've seen people like on set. That's like the that's the other part, is like there's there are no people aren't dropping secrets because it's really hard because they are filming in New York City, mm-hmm. which when Sex in the City was huge back then, we didn't have cell phones, which I never I always with with a show like this. And then there's so much centered around it. They are filming right on the street of New York City. They have fans lined up 
with yeah. their phones and they are sending every every social media outlet and every group these pictures these people. we know there's a funeral but we don't know whose funeral we saw them in all black and start crying we don't know whose funeral it is well there's 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 rumors of whose funeral it is but we don't but we we don't know for certain but i i love i'm trying to stay away from all that because so many fans are posting these young, these ladies out in the streets. And so I saw one where a girl had the audio. You could literally, she was so close, you could hear what they were saying. And I'm like, oh, goodness. TikTok I don't loves want to, to share these yes, videos. Yes, they do. <laughs> they keep popping up on my free page constantly. But I would page, do the same thing, though. If, oh, I, if I'm in New York City, City if I, I see that, that, I'm just like, look, look, look. Exactly. I'm going to do the same thing. But I always wonder when how, how do shows really keep things a secret? I think this is, this is going to be like the first show where it's so much centered around it. That we're going to see, are they going to be able like to keep everything? Filming on location in right. a big location in a movie. Are they going to be able to keep it? Like when they were filming that Hallmark Christmas movie, none of us were out here <laughs> taking our phones out. <laughs> we weren't. Speak we weren't for yourself, Megan. I walked down to the Christmas hill. Christmas in Graceland. Uh, yeah, they filmed the um, mm-hmm. the sledding scene down at. Um, but were you trying to listen Tom to Lee figure Park? out? Oh, no. she's gonna mar- she's gonna end up marrying Tom. No, no, did not care about that piece of it. Was just more curious about how they were gonna make yeah. it snow. And people are listening. People are literally putting their ear, trying to get super close and listen. They're secret investigators. Yeah. Someone who spoke out yesterday, Barbara Streisand, um, decided to give her thoughts on the most recent version of A Star Is Born, the one starring Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. She said, "Quote." I thought it was the wrong idea. Look, it was a big success. I can't argue with success, but I don't care so much about success as I do originality. A Star is Born has had many iterations. It first came out in the 30s. Then it was adapted in the 50s with Judy Garland. Then Barbara Streisand did it in the 70s. And then ultimately they came back with it in 2018. But the thing I found most interesting is that she had wanted and pitched for Beyonce and Will Smith to do A Star is Born, which... Can we get that as the next A Star is Born? Like, I'm, I would love mm, to no, see mm, that mm. version. I don't, know what she, I don't know how she thought that was going to be a thing. <sighs> yeah, Beyonce, be Beyonce's so a crappy actress. Uh, no, oh, no, 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 no. She's, she's not crappy at anything. She, she does everything that Beyonce, Beyonce can do. Tremendous. If Beyonce wants to be a volleyball she player, she's going to kill it. ruined <laughs> the third Austin Powers movie. No, she did not. It. Oh, my God. Yes, she did. True story. Whoa, I've, I've never it. seen one Austin Powers movie. She's sexy Cleopatra, and she was fantastic. She was Oh, she well, she's gr- continued to grow Girls. as an actress. I didn't, care I didn't for, like her what in else, Obsessed. What else is she? Oh, Obsessed. Obsessed was good. Obsessed was good. Oh, that's just but a she typical wasn't movie like, where like the dude cheats on his wife and the, the, the girl he cheated with is freaking insane and comes back and tries to kill the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've seen that times, so many yeah. times. Correct. But I wasn't, to, to personally to me, I don't think Beyonce is a horrible actress. I'm not expecting Beyonce to be Meryl Streep out here. No. Beyonce does what she's supposed to do. She does it well. She, I'm not, I'm not going to say that she's going to win. Like she is. Could she be better than Gaga? Gaga was good. <laughs> Gaga was stunning, but we didn't know how Gaga would be until we mm-hmm. saw A Star Is Born. But, and and then, I do think she also kind of played herself. Like I would love to see. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. she played, she played a role that was easy for her to tap. It was easy for her to tap into. I think she into. was amazing. There, we'll see how she does in she, the upcoming she, yes, project. She, well, well, I think that she was amazing in in A Star Is Born. But she did play someone who was in the music industry, and we know, you know, Lady Gaga has talked about she's gone through so much in her life. There was there were some similarities. So she did have to stretch that character, though. She did a great job. I do think I love Barbara Streisand. I've never seen. I've seen a little. I've seen like maybe like a minute or two because it was on TV one day of A Star Is Born for her on TCM or something like that. I think it's kind of hypocritical of her to come out yes. and say that I don't think that it, sh- it needed to be happen when you are a remake. When you did that's it, it was understand. a remake. So like that's that's. <laughs> to me is not needed right now and then because it was a success and because Gaga and and Bradley Cooper praised Barbara Chu when they when they play that role it just kind of seemed a little like it could be hypocritical a little bit but she might have some you know that's her viewpoints just thinking just you should just sort of thought like I probably shouldn't say that or like Barbara what if Judy Streisand's Garland had come relevant. out and been like man What'd Barbara Streisand Barbara Streisand's trying to remain relevant was the last Stop. time she's she the last, will Barbara always Streisand be relevant. Will always be relevant. When, when is the last time you heard her? She name? doesn't need. She that's a that's a legend too. Just like you said that you know oh, Madonna's no, 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 no. ago, but no, she's no, no, a legend. No. She don't got to do nothing. Yeah. She don't need a twenty seven year old man. Streisand is not on the <laughs> level of Madonna. Um, uh, in a she's different, not a I would legend. put her in a she different category. Legend. category. Yes, she's she a legend. Is. Oh my god, she gosh. is a legend. She was one of the biggest stars of Robbie. The I heard Robbie say Roser, so he agrees. She is one hundred percent a Broadway legend <laughs> a and a musical legend. theater legend. Beyonce is a legend, right, Roser? I make well, sure our Beyonce, friends. Beyonce, Beyonce <laughs> will be. I don't really care for Beyonce's music, but I don't but care. I ask yeah. that she. Yeah, Beyonce is okay. I just want to make sure our friendship is okay. She's just not a good actress. 
She's a legend. Just period. You say yeah. she's a legend. She's a legend in music. She's a horrible actress. Oh though. my gosh. <laughs> Our friendship might be in jeopardy. Moving All right. right along. Uh, let's choose a couple of things to double tap or not before we get out of here. A big congratulations to Brianna Stewart and her wife. What's her wife's name? We didn't have Marta. her down. Yes. They, they just welcomed a beautiful baby girl. Her name is Ruby Rose. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and so they welcomed the beautiful baby girl via surrogate. They also had a video sharing more of the story of how they kept it a secret and her talking about um, her injury and the pandemic, how it was just kind of like worked in her favor and she got a chance to be a wife, work on the relationship with her and Marta and uh, they have a family. They have a daughter now. So yeah. congratulations. I love this picture. I like of the, <laughs> the gold medal. What That's a flex beautiful. as a baby. Two NBA players just, you know. And Marta was injured, which gave mm-hmm. her the opportunity to go through with the surrogacy. And, and they talked about the blessing of coming out of such a horrible injury and how that's now led for them to be able to start their family. And I believe they're engaged, right? Yes. Okay. Well, I so think they're married. Did they get married? That's what I didn't know. I thought know. they got married. I, didn't, uh, I watched the video. They both have rings on. Okay. I do know that. Um, but congratulations to them. No one knew. It was a secret. When, so it, when it came out yesterday, I was like, oh, my gosh. I had no idea. But it's a... Beautiful picture, beautiful family. They have had such a busy year, um, busy year between the uh, winning gold medal at the Olympics to WNBA season starting back up, and they're both athletes. I don't know how they make make find the time, make the time, but they have uh, have a beautiful family. Um, a big bomb that dropped yesterday. Travis Kelsey mm-hmm. has shaved his beard, and he looks Old. like a different and women person. everywhere are disappointed. Because beer, beer, beards are something, you know. Beards are. Um, a beard was really his identity. I'm not trying to strip him from his identity, but like that was his look. It was his. I would say that it was his swag. Yeah. The beard was his swag. Now, I'm not saying that he don't have swag, but that added like a, an extra um to his swag because women love a good beard. It's just it's something about it. There's several Instagram Instagram accounts for guys with beards. Like in, I've scrolled on it before because it just beards don't are just worry. something. He drew They're one back on for his new profile picture on Twitter. He looks, so he understood. He looks older without a beard. I will say that. He looks like a different person. <laughs> like so often. A child. He looks older. He does look totally different. I think he looks older. He looks a lot older. He does not look like Jonas Valanciunas anymore. His that much are not together. That's a lot of people have, have said that he has um, Single. made some facial, chair, facial hair changes in the past when things have gone up and down. So perhaps. Mm. And I did look at her Twitter account last night. And at that time, she had not commented on she can't. the beard. Well, if they were like together, together. Oh, they're not together. She took those pictures down. Like, you know, yeah. you know, when someone's they've gone through ups and downs before. And they got back together when we thought they were broken up. They are not together. They are not together again. Um, I do think people go through changes when any anytime you go through like a big life life change. But I also think it's hot. That's why I got like w- the heat that we've already said. This is the hottest this country's ever experienced in the, month, in the month of July. It is hot. He's like, you know what? I I think hopefully he grows it back out because it just it's a very attractive piece for him. It adds a lot. So good accessory. Yeah. Hopefully, but no more, uh, no more reality shows for him. No more love reality shows, please. You remember his reality show? Mm -mm. You remember his reality show? No. Kelsey finds. Oh my goodness. I know you guys. I didn't even watch it, but it was on E. He had a reality show on E. Yeah. Why? Why and when? Because why does anyone have a reality show to to fall in love? I mean, catching Kelsey. (laughs) I actually had a friend that tried out for it, so that's why I know. Catching Kelsey is a reality show. Fifty women from fifty states vie to win the heart of Travis. No, I don't remember that was a big deal about a football. Okay, literally no recollection of that. He was playing football then, but this is before Travis Kelsey was like. That's what really gave him, in my opinion, before the football skills. But this is what really like put Travis Kelsey in a different lane and a different map where he became really like worldwide where everyone mm-hmm. knew who Travis Kelsey was, not just sports fans, but it was like, Oh, cause everyone started watching E like, who was this dude? Wow. Yeah. That, that makes total sense. Had no idea. Um, someone else talking about hair, Evan Fournier, a uh, new resident of New York after signing with the Knicks this off season. He tweeted, now I need the best barber in NYC because I need help, LOL. And someone said, fellow named Kevin, he's in Brooklyn. He cut you up in Tokyo. Maybe he can do it again. And Evan Fournier said he needs a barber too. <laughs> it's just true. It's no lies were told. <laughs> no. 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 He might know someone though. <laughs> It's like one of those times where it's just no knock, but like I'm a I'm a big hair person, so it's just one of those things where it's like I'm not asking someone if I don't think 
if I don't think that I like their hair or their hairstyle is not, it's not my style. That's the one person I'm not asking. Mm -mm. Like, I'm not going to ask that person how they, how they're here. And I don't, I don't even believe, cause some people think that you look at a stylist's hair to figure out if, how, but I don't believe that. Because okay, their other are so, clients. They're so yeah. busy. Mm -hmm. They're so busy that they don't have time to do their hair, but you got to start looking at client pictures, but I'm not going to ask someone if I don't, and if I don't, if, if I don't ever ask you, that tells you. Read the room. Yes. <laughs> Figure it out. One last thing before we get out of here. Uh, would you eat this? Robbie, our RSI, sent this this morning. It is from Little Caesars. It is a pepperoni pizza and a pepperoni calzone merged together into a pepperoni pizza calzone. I feel like yes. Rizzo, you would eat this. Hell yeah. And this is just <laughs> like a, a totally giant pepperoni pizza bread dipping sauce yeah it's like I mean, smorgasbord i've had a pizza pepperoni pizza and i've had a calzone like what like i've it, never had know, a calzone whatever, what is like, really it's, no it's, it's it's a pizza inside like a folded up piece of bread like, yeah it's really what it is it's I mean, like it's, a pita pocket made of pizza dough yeah. with pizza fillings on the inside it's always yeah. looked like it would not it's do like a, lot. a lot of bread yeah it's it wouldn't do a lot of cheese body. yeah often. i mean like if I mean, if you want to make sure you take a nap. I've always been in the belief that, that like, if I want that, I would just get pizza. I think pizza is superior yeah. to calzone. Some people love personally, bread. But yes, some people love as much bread yeah. as possible. My body would reject that. So I just know yeah. my body very well. I can I can tell you it's like love at first sight and love at not sight. Like, no. I've never felt good after eating a calzone. Yeah. That's never been a choice that has, like, settled well. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All righty. Well, let's hustle up and get out of here. It is Tuesday. No, no more summer league. So where are we all going to be watching tonight? It's Tuesday. I don't know. <gasps> Real Housewives of New York comes on. So there's my plan. I really don't know. I have nothing. We're ca we're finally caught up mm -hmm. on so many things. We do have to watch the most recent episode of Hard Knocks on HBO. So that was on Sunday. Yeah. Hard Knocks for me. And uh, I'm, I've got to finish watching um, Shiny Flakes on Netflix. Shiny, Shiny Flakes. Flakes? Yeah. It's uh, about a teenage drug lord oh. in Germany. And what, he, and what streaming you, service? Uh, Netflix. You've oh. heard of uh, Silk Road? You remember Silk Road, like where people were like buying yes. drugs online and stuff? Yes. So this kid took it to a different level. Is it a it documentary? Was, it, yeah, 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 it's an hour, okay. like an hour and a half, hour and a half, two hours long. Have mm -hmm. you watched the Malice at the Palace documentary? I have. Very good. Good. Yeah, I think that's I, what we I thought today. the the best part for me was the Jermaine O'Neal stuff because okay. I didn't really know much about him. I knew about our test. Mm -hmm. Yeah, still on my list. <laughs> me too. I think I might get to that today. That, that it's great. Famous. I think sports. I want to. I was going to watch it last night, and I realized I want to watch that with my dad. That's like, mm. that's you know when you, you I find those like father daughter bonding times. What you can watch together, right? You can't. I mean, like he's not going to watch Real Housewives. With no, you. he's definitely not. Oh yeah. gosh, no. So this is like one of those. I've, in my head, I see us like, you know, Hanging back. Out. To, yeah, that's like it's like <laughs> back to the, like those good old days. So that's something I watch with my dad and my mom because she loves basketball. So perfect. It'll be a family thing. All okay. right. Well, we'll be back. Tomorrow, tomorrow's Wednesday. We just Jessica's last show no, of the Thursday week. Thursday too. Oh, it'll be Thursday. Okay. Well, then our second to last show of the week. <laughs> so we'll be back tomorrow. D'Angelo Williams will join us. Roser will be back too. Yeah, I'll be here. Okay. I'll be here. So the gang will be on here. We'll see you then. This has been Rise and Grind with Jessica and Megan. Tune in live daily at 8 a.m. or on demand by heading to GrindCityMedia.com or Grind City Media on YouTube.